Enduring a technical interview with an uncooperative interviewer can be one of the worst professional experiences you can have. It's a scenario where you can sense that your performance isn't good. And the interviewer seemingly makes the situation worse with their facial expressions, impatience, or maybe even by berating you. All this will definitely increase your anxiety over the five to six hour long interview process and can even leave a lasting effect on your confidence in future interviews. This is something that I've experienced multiple times in my career. And after reflecting on my experiences, I've come up with strategies that you can apply before, during, and after the interview to help you through this process. So let's start with what you can do before the interview. So I play a decent amount of team-based online games. In these types of games, it's generally accepted that a certain percentage of your games are completely unwinnable. Just because you are matched up with people simply so skilled that it's just literally impossible for you to win the game. And in these situations, there's just not that much you can do. All you can really do is focus on being the best version of yourself you can possibly be and to try and elevate your team. This mentality extends beyond the gaming world. And it can be useful to think about in terms of software interviews. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, the cards can be stacked against you. If you happen to have an interviewer that you simply don't click with or encounter technical glitches or other unexpected issues, it may lead to a poor interview experience outside of your control. And when it does happen, I think it's essential to remember that you shouldn't put all the blame on yourself. You can't win everything. And as usual, I'll share a story. I was doing this interview with this one company, and as soon as the interview started, I knew it was gonna be bad. We realized at the beginning of the call that there was like a two second delay between our Zoom audios. This made everything awkward, even down to our basic introductions, where it seemed like we were constantly interrupting or talking over each other. And when it came time to the technical portion of the interview, it became increasingly difficult to engage in the technical discussion of the question on hand. And as I became more nervous, as I struggled to get a grip on this question, my interviewer became noticeably less interested in anything I had to say. And any clarification on the prompt I asked, all I really got was, just read the example again. Needless to say, that was a painful interview, and I was definitely not on my A-game that day. But it's crucial to understand that sometimes there are situations like this where it seems like nothing is going your way, and it's important to not beat yourself up about it after the fact. Before the interview, my advice is to generally prepare for worst case scenarios like this. Here's a quote that I found on Reddit. I have found that passing the text screen is highly dependent on the interviewer. Some give clear instructions, but some give vague instructions and then give weird clues like trying to guide you towards some specific approach they had in mind. Except that for a certain number of interviews in your life, you could have been completely prepared for it, but certain circumstances and even just how well you mesh with your interviewer are simply out of your control sometimes. So with that mindset in mind about mental preparation before the interview, Interview, let's talk about what you can do during the interview to maximize success. In my experience, I found two types of difficult interviewers, the ones with the red personality and the ones with the blue personality. The red personality tends to be someone who is dominating and results oriented. You might have already encountered an interview like this before because they're usually the most memorable. These are the ones that rush you, that grill you, that challenge you to see how well you react under pressure. And some of these people low key might even have some sort of power trip going on, but their primary focus is on the outcome. For these people, it's essential to recognize that they usually already have a solution in mind when they ask you a question. And even you, if you have an alternate or a better solution, it's important to remember that they control the ultimate outcome of the interview. And because of that, it's important to think about the solution they're trying to guide you towards and to validate their input by building upon their suggestions and not away from their suggestions. And on the other hand, interviewers with a blue personality are highly analytical and stick to the script. They may not grill you, but they are very by the book. Their primary concern is the technical correctness of your solution. And due to that, they'll pay very close attention to the minute technical details of your solution, drill down deep into time and space complexity, and might even criticize you for syntax errors in your code. For these types of interviewers, it's crucial to be extremely receptive to even the smallest amounts of feedback and to show adaptability. If they point out a specific problem, why did you use this data structure instead of this data structure? It's because they are testing you. They're trying to gauge your response 
and to see if you actually know what you are doing. If they suggest a minor, seemingly trivial change in your code, like using a for loop instead of a while loop, make sure you incorporate their suggestion even if you don't necessarily agree. They are extremely detail-oriented and will likely grade you down for not responding to those types of hints. And with listening, comes another important piece of advice. Regardless of your level of frustration during an interview, there's always a chance to turn it around. It's crucial to be professional and positive no matter how frustrated you might feel. I remember one time I interviewed for a job at a large big tech company. And the interview, it was pretty standard. It was about five hours straight of technical interviews. And in the first interview of the day, I was presented with a question that on the surface, it was pretty simple. And my interviewer and I, we connected pretty well, but everything changed as soon as I started to struggle with the question. The more nervous I became, the more difficult it was for me to focus. I remember my eyes just darting back and forth between the clock and my screen, just trying to figure out how to do the problem without blanking out. And after about 40 minutes of me wrangling with the question, my interviewer finally cut me off on time. And you could just tell by his tone and his facial expressions that he was not happy. Like I had just wasted his time or personally offended him or something. That was a pretty rough experience. And I knew there was little to no shot of me getting the job afterwards, but I still had a full day's worth of interviews after that. I had to press on and maintain professionalism in that context. Overall, it was a valuable experience for me to have. We've all experienced interviews where we're asked a challenging question like, writing a regular expression from memory alone or something. But when confronted with a difficult interviewer, it's crucial to always keep yourself level-headed and maintain politeness and courtesy throughout the whole conversation. And if you don't, it will not be a good time for you. It's natural to feel frustrated in certain situations. We all have moments in life like that. I have moments in life like that. But it's important to understand that displaying frustration in an interview will likely sink your chances immediately. I've sometimes felt like I was backed into a corner sometimes during these assessments. And when you feel backed into a corner, it can be easy to just let your emotions take over. Let me again share a quick story highlighting the importance of controlling your emotions during an interview. I remember once I was doing a phone screen with a large notable startup in San Francisco. And throughout the interview, I was working on this technical question that I felt pretty confident in. Like I had a good grasp on the solution. But the interviewer, he kept giving me random hints or like poking and prodding my solution in different directions. And over time, I started to get increasingly irritated. Like it seemed like he thought I had no idea what I was doing and he felt the need to constantly correct me or fix things. It's not really clear what his intention was, but I felt my frustration grow and grow and grow. And because of that, I felt that the interview was taking a turn for the worse. It was going into the ground, even though I had a good grasp on the question. And maybe after the 10th correction on my problem, I finally got frustrated and I told him, yeah, that's what I was going to do anyways. And after that, the interviewer kind of just laughed and he didn't say anything for the rest of the session. And in that moment, as soon as I said it, I knew I made a huge mistake. Despite finishing all parts of the question, I received a swift rejection. Always maintain courtesy, always be professional and never get frustrated. And along the lines of courtesy, it's important to try to build a personal connection with your interviewer. I remember an experience where I had an unexpected final interview added at the end of the day. It was weird. It seemed like they wanted one last evaluation on me because I was probably a borderline candidate or something. And I was paired with one of the heads of the department for this interview. And the situation, it was definitely not ideal. It was around like 7 p.m. and the interviewer looked exhausted and disinterested. He, he just really didn't look like he wanted to be there. And that by itself made me anxious. That made me feel that this interview was going to fail. But despite this, I pushed hard to try and build a connection. I persisted in asking questions about the company's values, products, and goals. And gradually, after this hour-long conversation, I felt the energy levels of this interviewer slowly start to rise and rise and rise. And eventually, our conversation became much more engaging over time. The key takeaway here is to recognize that interviewers are not just human technical question assessors. These are people with their own passions, their own hobbies, their own interests in life. And by trying to tap into these areas, you can create a connection that will improve the atmosphere of the interview and that potentially sets you up for a better outcome. So we talked about what you can do before the interview and during the interview, but what about after the interview? Reflecting on my experiences, it's important to remember that the people conducting these interviews, they are human, they are people, and they have flaws too. Would you want to be judged by how you acted during a terrible workday? Everyone has their own issues and struggles that they're dealing with behind the scenes. And these people, they're no different 
than the rest of us. This technical interviewer on Reddit gives his unique perspective on this whole thing. He acknowledges that people vary wildly in how they perform in interviews, and that it's no indication on the caliber of programmer they are, or how they would perform on the actual job. Sometimes it takes certain people just longer to get into the right headspace, while for others, they struggle with anxiety and nervousness. And for interviewers, Sometimes the one hour spent with you simply isn't enough to give you a higher recommendation. He acknowledges that he wishes the process could be different and a better experience for the interviewer. And given this person's thoughts, I generally agree. I have myself probably interviewed a couple dozen people over the four companies I've been in in my life. And generally, it's just extremely difficult to assess people in a one hour interview. And due to that, if you have a bad interview experience, you should always remember that sometimes these things happen and it's not because these and it's not because they're bad people again no one would want to be judged about how they acted on the worst day of their career